What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I want to take a look at a Puerto Rican lightweight by the name of Pedro Martinez. He is to your left. And of course, the three-weight division champion, Henry Armstrong, is to your right. And these two men were getting on January 24th, 1940. What was interesting about this fight, the very next fight that Henry Armstrong would have, would be for the World Middleweight Championship belt against Sefrino Garcia. And unfortunately for Henry Armstrong, referee George Blake would immediately take away five rounds from Henry Armstrong. That was a scheduled 10-round fight that would assure Henry Armstrong a draw with Sefrino Garcia. Because Henry Armstrong would win every round. And this would prevent Henry Armstrong from becoming a four-time world champion for weight divisions. That's what Pedro Martinez. He was born April 24th, 1914 in Puerto Rico. He died June 26, 1996. He was 82 years of age at the time of his death. I had the pleasure of meeting Pedro Martinez and, of course, Henry Armstrong as well. Pedro Martinez was a Puerto Rican lightweight who stood 5 foot 5 inches and he had a 68 inch reach. He began his career February 1st, 1931. He ended his career October 29, 1940, just shortly after his loss. To Henry Armstrong, somewhat seven months after. And Pedro Martinez had 56 knockouts and 88 straight victories. He was the winner of the Puerto Rican Lightweight Championships in 1933. And after his victories over Frankie Click and Aldo Spalding, he was given an opportunity to face Lou Ambers in a non title lightweight championship bout. Very interesting. Very interesting. He'd be in the ring with Leonard Del Gino, May 15th, 1936, in New York's Madison Square Garden. Leonard Del Gino, very underrated, and you don't hear much about him. He was from the Lower East Side. I heard plenty of stories from a friend that I had by the name of Teddy. He was very good friends of Leonard Del Gino. Matter of fact, he knew all the fighters during those years in Stillman's gym. And he told me Leonard Del Gino was a very, very good fighter during those years. Through the course of the bout of Pedro Martinez, Leonard Del Gino came in with a fighting record of 30 wins, 6 losses, and he would lose in 10 rounds to Pedro Martinez, but he put up a good account of himself. As a matter of fact, he'd be in the ring with fighters such as Phil Fur, Eddie Cool and Bobby Poncho, Maxi Berger, Sammy Angard and Jimmy Vaughn, Lou Fellman, and Wesley Ramsey, just to name a few. Ended his career with a total bout of 63 fights, 44 wins, 13 losses, 16 knockouts, and six draws. Another fighter Pedro Martinez would be in the ring with was young Peter Jackson. He would be the colored welterweight champion and he would lose his title to a fighter by the name of Coco Kid, July 26, 1936. Pedro Martinez fought young Peter Jackson April 24, 1939 at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, California. Young Peter Jackson came into that fight with a fighting career record of 61 wins, 17 losses. Young Peter Jackson would lose to Pedro Martinez in 10 rounds. He was a very, very good fighter with young Peter Jackson. That's for Henry Armstrong. Pedro Martinez would get in the ring with him January 24th, 1940. Armstrong would come in the ring weighing 140 pounds. And this is for the World Welterweight Championship belt. Pedro Martinez would come in and weighing at 144 pounds. He had 19,157 screaming spectators that roared very loudly when both men were introduced. They invested $59,575 in his much anticipated bout. Henry Armstrong defeated Lou Ambers, Bonnie Ross, Petey Cerrone, Baby Harris Menzi, Sefino Garcia, and Ernie Rudrick. He was a reigning welterweight champion and after cuts above and below Pedro Martinez's eyes he was exhausted and he suffered tremendous body punches referee Billy Kavanaugh was stopped about in 47 seconds to the ninth round it was scheduled for 15 rounds there was no way in the world that Pedro Martinez would make it to the bell and the fight would stop. Matter of fact, Pedro Martinez was down in the fourth and seventh round. The judge Joe Lynch and Marty Monroe 
Ruth had Martinez way behind in the scorecards. Armstrong look to me, Stephanie No Garcia, March 1st, 1940. And this is where he would unfortunately lose an opportunity to capture the middleweight championship belt, which he well deserved. And he would lose his title to Fitzy Zivic, October 4th, 1940. Be the main event attraction on the undercard, you would have the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Pedro Martinez, very underrated fighter. And I just wanted to pay homage to him. Henry Armstrong, as we know, I have him rated number one, uh, number four in my world ranking system. But number one in terms of his accomplishments, 19 welterweight championship defenses. That's phenomenal. 27 fights in 1937 and 26 by knockout. And that same year in 1937, he would pick up a featherweight championship belt from P.D. Cerrone and be the first black featherweight champion in the United States and win it at New York's Madison Square Garden. Oh, what an accomplishment. And from featherweight, he goes up to welterweight because he couldn't get a fight with Lou Ambrose at that time for the lightweight championship. And he defeats Barney Ross becomes featherweight, then welterweight, and go back down to the lightweight division and finally gets an opportunity with Lou Ambers. And he did it in nine months. I don't know who does that. Henry Armstrong. Hell of a fighter. So all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. And I want to salute Pedro Martinez. And of course, Henry Armstrong. Two terrific fighters. Thanks for hanging there with me. Salute to my viewers. Until next time. Peace.